Hello, it's Nancy today. I'm going to try and put my um, warp on. So, this is probably going to be kind of boring unless you're really interested in this sort of thing. But I'm putting these on. I have to keep them in order so that they're going to not get tangled up in there. So, what I'm doing now is I'm cutting these the previous strings. Go my scissors, and I am tying this. This is my new warp here. Okay, and so I'm. This is all tied into separate little bundles. You see. And so I'm taking one bundle, and I am tying them to the old warp. So that's three strings done. Three threads. Oops, this one is supposed to go in between those two. So we'll get another string here. Now I don't know the proper way, so I'm just doing it my way. If you want to know the proper way, then go to a different video. Because this is the world according to Nancy don't want anybody to be upset with me later because they wasted their time watching me and didn't find out the right thing, okay? <coughs> Naturally, I dropped my scissors at the very moment. I guess I could tie my scissors up here. just so they won't fall down again. Okay. So those four are done. Now, I don't know about tying them on here because I'm going to be pulling them through. And I'm not sure how to tie them on anyway. Okay, so I'll put another little group of them here, and then I will cut these at the same length. I'll take the first one, and I will connect it to one of these. Uh oh, how are you doing down there? There, I'll connect this. I cut all these strings you see here. I cut them all so they'll be the same as the others. So we'll take the next one in line. I guess I didn't cut them long enough. So I take the next one in line and I shall tie them together. I've already found out that these will go through my these will go through the reed. get the next one in order. Now, um, my friend, whose name has just escaped me, asked me, oh my goodness, how can you do that, all that threading, it would drive me nuts, threading that whole loom. Well, actually, I'm not going to thread the whole thing. I'm just going to thread until I feel tired. I can handle that. I just loop that on there so I can keep from messing it up. These are all kind of tangled in there though. Good thing there's not a hundred of them here, eh? So we shall get another one here. Now the thing about um, getting frustrated because there's so many to do, only do a few. You know, you only decide, you don't decide, oh I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do this warp today. I'm going to get the whole thing on. 
Now you decide, I'm going to go work on the warp today. I will just spend some time with it. And I didn't decide beforehand how long I'll spend with it. I don't know what the factors are going to be. Maybe my back, maybe the telephone, maybe nighttime. But whatever the factors are, I'll just only work on this until it becomes time to do something else. Or until I'm tired of it. As you can see, it's very quick. You know, it's not like I have a lot to do here. I'm not doing everything at once. I'm only taking one little part of the deal and doing it. I don't want to decide, oh, I'm going to do this and that and the other. I'm just going to work on it. It's just like when you sit down and knit. When you sit down and knit, you don't decide, oh, I'm going to finish the whole thing right now. You just pick it up because it's the knitting that you do when you're watching television or relaxing or something. So that's the way you can accomplish a great many things that seem tedious. You just work on it. You know in the pioneer days they did this every day. This is what they did in the evening. They had their looms. Somebody had their spinning wheel. And they spun and they wove, and that was just what they did in the evenings. Instead of reading a book by candlelight or something, they did this. And their chores were all done. The father would probably sit around and read the scriptures to them. Had a big pot of soup probably cooking for tomorrow. Okay, that's the next one ready. Next little group of them, anyway. So those are done. How about... So there's ten in a group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there was eleven in that group, I guess. Make sure there's none left that are not hooked up yet. It looks like they're all in there. They're all hooked up. Okay, so now I will pull this up, Oops. and I will get a second bundle. Let's see, here we go. Another little group of ten strings tied together. So this means when I'm working later, I only have to untangle what ten strings can do instead of untangling everything at the same time. Now this would be better to just untie that little piece of yarn there. But I didn't. Well, it looks like this goes into the next one. Okay, so we'll line these all up and then we'll cut them off together. Okay. And now these are the strings we will be working with. We can move them down a little bit. Then I'll take another four or five. Five is probably a good number because there's ten in a bundle. Okay. So there we go. I don't think I'm going to cut them all at the same time. I'm just going to cut the one I'm going to use. This one. Make sure you've got a good knot there that's not going to be thick and have things wrong with it because it won't fit through the reed if you do that. There. 
Oops, that didn't work either. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to carry on and do this for a while. So I guess I'll say goodbye. Goodbye.